today we will discuss about the bohr sommerfeld atomic model there are some limitation in the bohr atomic model and which are overcome by the sommerfeld atomic model in case of bohr atomic model it was assumed by bohr that nucleus is situated at the center of the circular path that is the circular orbit in which the electrons move and the electrons will gain energy when they have to move to the excited state and they release energy only when there is a change of state and the energy is quantized and the paths are also quantized and according to bohr the energy when one electron jumps from one path to another is given as a quantized value of h nu and the electron when it is moving on a same path the momentum is also constant and it has a constant value in case of bohr model it was discussed that the hydrogen atom will give us a spectra that is known as hydrogen spectra and consisting of lyman series balmer series pashtun series fern series packer series and so on when the electron jump from second orbit to first orbit it release energy in the form of radiations and it is the first lyman Uh, first line of the lyman series and if it moves from third to first orbit it will give us the second line of the lyman series and so on when it move from fourth level to the first energy level it will give us the third line of the lyman series in the same way when the electron jump from third energy level to second energy level it gives us the first balmer series that is represented by h alpha and similarly when it moves from fourth level to the second level it gives us the second line of the balmer series which is represented by h beta and so on when it moves electron moves from second uh, fifth energy level to the second orbit it will give us the h gamma lyman uh, balmer series when these lines are observed carefully they are not a single line they are a series of line this is a group of line h alpha has a group of line similarly h beta is when observed carefully have shows a group of or series of line and this spectra is known as fine spectra or these lines are known as fine spectral lines which is not explained by bohr atomic model and this limitation is overcome by sommerfeld atomic model in sommerfeld atomic model there are two important assumption first assumption of sommerfeld atomic model is that the orbital path in which the electrons are moving are not or circular they are elliptical paths electrons moves in elliptical orbits or they are moving in elliptical paths if we study about the elliptical path we find out that there are two type of motions in elliptical path sommerfeld assumed that the sun uh, nucleus is situated at one of the focus point of the ellipse that is consider if this is our major axis then this is our distance of semi major axis and if this is our minor axis this is the distance of our semi minor axis and this is the focal point and this focal point is given like this c square 
is equal to a square minus b square and we can easily find out the focal point if we have given that uh, the value of uh, semi major axis and semi minor axis in summerfield atomic model we find there are two type of variation variables for the to discuss the motion of the electron if electron is moving in this elliptical path we find out that its radial distance is changing with respect to time it is decreasing as we move towards the nucleus and it is increasing at we are moving away from the nucleus it means there is a motion relative to the radial vector that is the distance between the nucleus and the electron if the radial distance is in motion or radial distance is is changing we will obtain there is a radial velocity let us consider the radial velocity in our case we are representing it with vr it means there is a radial motion and the radial momentum is represented with the help of notation pr as we already discussed that according to bohr model momentum is a constant quantity here we also taking momentum as a constant quantity and let us consider the momentum total momentum that is the moment variation of momentum with respect to the radial vector is given by a constant and h cross where you very well know that h cross is none other than h upon 2 pi and what is h h is your planck's constant this is a constant quantity it means h upon 2 pi is also a constant quantity and nr is a quantum number and in this case we are get giving it as a name radial quantum number this quantum number will give us the shape of the orbit in our further cases in our further examples and with the change of the position with the time in this elliptical orbit we also saying that the angle between the radial vector and the major axis is also moving changing it means theta one theta is also variable if theta is also variable in this case it means there is a angular velocity and this velocity is changing with change of angle with respect to time and here we are representing is with theta the angle is in motion or angle is changing with the time here we are representing our angular momentum corresponding to this velocity that the angular momentum in this case is p theta again we are taking our bohr assumption that momentum remains constant in a particular orbit in this case we are considering the total momentum is the integral of the angular momentum with the angular displacement this is the total angular momentum from 0 to 2 pi the angle minimum is 0 and the maximum angle is 2 pi and we are getting a constant and again we have h cross where k is a constant and this constant in this case is mentioned as as a neutral quantum number these two quantum numbers will explain the total motion of our electron in an elliptical path hence we consider there are two type of motion one is radial motion in which radial velocity is changing another is angular motion in which the transverse velocity is changing the principal quantum number n is having a relation with radial quantum number and azimuthal quantum number and these two quantum numbers having a relation with our major axis and minor axis and the relation is given like this that 
distance or the length of the same major axis is given by a naught divided by z times of n square where n is representing the principal quantum number p is the length of the semi minor axis and it is given by a naught divided by z n times into k where k is representing the azimuthal quantum number and n is representing the principal quantum number a naught is your force radius and it is a constant quantity that is the radius of hydrogen atom and it is equal to 0.529 arm um, strong that is 0.529 into 10 raised to power minus 10 meter from the up uh, this relation we will find out that a divided by b is not none another than n divided by k it means a is depending upon principal quantum number the length of the major axis is depending on the principal quantum number and the length of the minor axis is depending upon the azimuthal quantum number if we take k is equal to 0 then we will find out that b also becomes equal to 0. If b is equal to 0, when k is equal to 0, we will find out that a is not equal to 0. And if we draw a shape in this case, we will find out that if this is our principal axis which is not equal to 0 and our minor axis becomes equal to 0, we will obtain a straight line and in this on this straight line there this will be the nucleus on the focal point and the electron will move like this and this is a fake assumption and the value of k never neither be equal to zero we will consider this in our further example let us consider a case where principal quantum number is equal to 3 and we know that n is equal to radial quantum number and azimuthal quantum number addition. And in our first case, we are taking k is equal to 3. When k is equal to 3 according to this relation, if n is equal to 3 is given we will find n r is equal to 0 and a comes out to be that is a naught n square divided by z will be 9 times of a naught divided by z and p comes out to be a naught n times of k divided by z and it comes out to be that is 9 a naught divided by z because n is equal to 3 and k is equal to 3. In this situation we will get a circular orbit because here semi major axis and minor axis both are equal it means the electron will move in the circular path where this is 9 a naught divided by z that is a and this b is equal to again 9 a naught divided by z that is b in case second we are taking n is equal to 3 that is given k is equal to 2 when k is equal to 2 and r becomes equal to 1 this will be no effect on the value of major axis again it comes out to be 9 times of a naught divided by z but now b that is the length of the semi minor axis becomes 6 a naught divided by z if in the same figure i have to show the path according to these two values i will show like this this is 9 a naught divided by z and this is b that comes out to be 6 a naught divided by z similarly for the case third when n is equal to 3 
k is equal to 1 and r comes out to be 2 and a remains the same that is 9 a naught divided by z b now becomes 3 a naught divided by z it means this 6 a naught times by z will become 3 a naught times by z and i will have a third elliptical path and in which the same a major axis will remain the same but the minor axis becomes 3 a naught divided by z these three paths it means for principal quantum n is equal to 3 we get three different orbits these orbits are different in shape one is a circular and two are elliptical and in elliptical they are again different in shape but their energies that is the energy for the first orbit if the electron is moving in this orbit let the consider energy z1 second orbit the energy z2 and for third orbit the energy z3 we will find out that e1 is equal to e2 is equal to e3 because in every case the principal quantum number remains the same and energy is directly proportional to the principal quantum number third conclusion which we draw from the given situation that they are not lying in the same plane if the circle is in xy plane it is possible that the ellipse in yz plane and the third ellipse is in zx plane it means they are all are moving in different planes with different shapes as the energy for these three orbits is the same we will find out that we get the same spectral line if the electron will move from e3 to e1 or e2 to e1 or e1 to the first ground state if this hypothesis this assumption is unable to explain the fine structure of the Balmer series. So, Summerfield take the second assumption and in its second assumption he described that the motion of electron is not constant, it is relativistic. Electron motion is relativistic. In relativity, we find that if particle is at rest its mass is m naught and if same particle is moving with some velocity which is nearly or approximately equal to the speed of light the mass will not remain the equal to the rest mass the mass goes on increasing and the relation is known by m is equal to m naught under divided by under root 1 minus v square upon c square where m is the mass of the body or the electron which is moving with velocity v and m naught represents the rest mass of the electron again if you assume that the nucleus is situated at one focus and electron is at any point a and let the velocity at the point a is v1 at b the velocity becomes v2 at c the velocity becomes v3 at point d which is very nearby to the nucleus velocity become v4 that there is a change of velocity with the change of your radial vector this is the nearest position of electron to the nucleus and hence due to the electrostatic force coulomb force the force of attraction is very large nucleus is a positively charged body and electron is a negatively charged body at this point the velocity of the particle is very large and at this position the velocity of the particle is very small and according to our relativistic mass equation 
with the velocity we find that if there is a change of velocity there will be a change